Hey, how's it going? Andrew Kramer with VideoCopilot.net. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a practical look at HDR imagery and 32 bits per channel inside of After Effects 7. So let's go ahead and get started. Now most of us are familiar with 8 bits per channel and likewise 16 bits per channel. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to be comparing 8 bits per channel to 32 bits per channel since 8 and 16 bits per channel works similar. So anyway, don't let that confuse you. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to make a new composition and I'm going to choose layer, new solid, and I'm going to go to effects, generate, ramp. And what I'm going to do is just use these default settings. I'm going to move the black point down just a little bit and the white point up just a little bit. Now, if you look in my info palette here, when I roll over the black, you'll notice that the RGB is set to 000. And as I move down, the value increases all the way up to 255, which is pure white in the 8 bits per channel workspace. So how does this differ from 32 bits per channel? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to go to the project settings and set the end color to a color beyond 8 bits per channel in the 32 bits range. So if you'll notice here, RGB is set to 111. Now, as you can see, it's the pure white that we're all familiar with. Now, basically what that means is 0 to 1 is equivalent to 0 to 255 in 8 bits per channel. So what it means is 1 in the 32-bit float mode is basically pure white, and anything beyond 1 is what's known as super bright. So if I change the color here to say 4, 4, 4, that's 4 times whiter than regular white, or brighter than regular white. So now I'm going to hit OK and you'll notice that my gradient now is much smaller and if I bring my points back up well when the gradient gets from about right here to right here you'll notice that the RGB value is approximately 1 now anything beyond this is so white and so bright that it just shows up as pure white now but watch when I roll over the values beyond you'll notice that in the info palette it is actually going up to hotter colors or brighter colors now there's a little function inside of the composition window which is the aperture and essentially this allows you to see data beyond white without actually changing your composition so if I click on this button it goes ahead and resets it but the point is beyond those white values is in fact data and it just takes some tools to be able to see it now that's just a viewing option. If we actually want to change this and be able to see the data in this super bright white area, we need to use a 32-bit effect such as exposure. So if I choose effects, color correction, exposure, you'll notice that if I pull the exposure down, we start seeing that data that's uh, beyond in the white points. Now, that's essentially what HDR is, is basically having values or color values beyond 8 and 16 bits. So how does having color values beyond what we're actually able to see help us? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and import this car HDR image. And what we're going to do is drag it out into the composition area to make a new comp. Now, the image is pretty blown out here, but working in 32 bits per channel will allow us to sample the data beyond white. So if you notice when I roll over here, I'm getting values at about 1.5. If I choose effects, color correction, and curves, I actually will have a little bit more control over how my image is going to look. So if I give it a little more contrast by making the curve a little bit sharper, you'll see. So as you can see, I can get a lot more color out of the highlighted outside background area and still maintain a properly exposed image by using a curves adjustment. Now, not all effects are 32 bits per channel, so if I go to my effects and presets, I can set this little wing arrow to show only 32-bit effects, and then you'll notice that you know, there are many effects. Most of the ones you probably use most commonly are all 32 bits, and you'll see it says 32 bits next to it. Now, let me show you kind of 
how other 32-bit effects work with images that are 32-bit. So if I just go and bring the curves down just a little bit on this image and then add a Gaussian blur, you'll notice that the image begins to bloom in these highlighted areas. So you see this is kind of blowing out here and the sky is really blowing out over top the rest of our image and that's kind of a realistic effect that you would see if you were blurring the image using a camera. Now if we take the levels adjustment there's sort of a fix uh, you can see there's the clip to output black and clip to output white. Now in 8 bits per channel that's okay but if I bring this down it's working just as an 8 bit per channel uh, effect so we have to go ahead and uncheck these two to really be able to sample that data beyond white and you do that and you're gonna really have some control over your image so anyway this is just kind of a practical look at HDR imagery I want to actually cover a couple of other important things about it like okay well so what you know maybe I'll just expose my images properly next time well it's a little bit more than that now another great characteristic is when using motion blurs I'm gonna go ahead and import a camera raw file so this picture was shot with the 20D and I'm gonna just open it up and as you can see it's just a regular picture but instead of just bringing it in because if I do right now it's just gonna bring it in at a standard 8 bits or 16 bits I wanna actually bring the exposure all the way down brightness all the way down contrast all the way down and the reason I do this is once we bring it into After Effects we can bring the brightness up and push these white points here beyond just regular one white so I'm gonna hit OK and then I'm going to make a new composition and drag this image out to it. And I'm just going to choose transform fit to width, uh, rather fit to height, and pre-compose it. So what I'm going to do is choose effects, color correction, and down here go to levels. Now we have to uncheck the clip to output black and clip to output white in order to uh, take advantage of the 32 bits per channel. So I'm going to take this input white and just push it all the way over here to the histogram in order to get this image back to a proper exposure. But if I roll over these hot white points, you'll notice that the RGB value is at 9. So we've really pushed this beyond white because here it's white, but by adjusting the levels to expose the rest of the picture properly, we've pushed those white points way beyond their regular white. Now, the benefit now is if we choose effects, blur, Gaussian blur, we can then get a really neat effect when we blur this image out. So as you can see, the, uh, the highlight points there start to bloom. And a real cool part about this effect is when using motion blur. So I'm going to just set, up, set a few keyframes here uh, in the position and move forward just a few frames and just throw this image out of the uh, out of the area and let's see and let's move these keyframes closer together and I'm gonna turn on motion blur for the layer and as you can see here we're really getting this great effect because those white points are so bright that they're causing the image to kinda of smear so it's kinda of like a photographic effect and if we go composition settings we can change the shutter angle to something beyond 180, say like 350, and we can get an even more uh, blurry type of effect. And we can spread these out so we don't get that banding so bad. So let's go ahead and just preview this. I'm going to just select these keyframes and give them an easy ease here. OK. So if we were to convert this image back to 8 bits per channel, you know full well we wouldn't be getting this great blooming type of effect in these highlighted areas. You'll notice that they're just flat and I mean if that doesn't do it for you, I don't know what will. Now before I go, all of you users with digital cameras, you can always take raw images and import them like I've shown you here. However, if you really want to take advantage of 32 bits, let me show you a cool trick. What I have here are some images of a pool taken at various exposures. And from pretty blown out to moderately underexposed, I have a sequence here of about seven images. Now, in Photoshop CS2, I can actually take these images and merge them into one single HDR image or one 32-bit image. So if you want to try this out, put your camera on a tripod and take 
several different exposures. Now, you don't have to shoot in RAW. You can actually shoot just at regular JPEGs, but you definitely need to have different real exposures in the camera. You can't just have six different, you know, curves adjusted layers. So I'm going to go into Photoshop CS2 here, and I'm going to choose File, Automate, Merge to HDR. And then I go over to Browse here, and here are those sequenced images shot with the 20D. I'm going to go ahead and select them, choose Open, and now they're all listed here. And you can attempt to automatically align them if you didn't shoot them on a tripod, but uh, shoot it on a tripod. And I'm going to hit OK. And Photoshop is then going to process all these images and put them together. Okay, so now the images are all adjusted together and you can set the white point preview here and once you hit OK, you have an image inside of Photoshop that is now 32 bits. Now, you can't really do anything in Photoshop CS2 with the 32 bits per channel, but you can resize it to like a reasonable size if you're going to be working with it in After Effects and then when you save it, be sure to save it as a 32-bit format and I'll go ahead and show you that now. So I'm going to choose File, Save As, and you can save it as a Photoshop file in OpenEXR or this, uh, these Radiance files are pretty good. Um, generally, I use the EXR file. Uh, I don't know why, I just do. Then you just save it, and you've got a 32-bit image that you can now import into After Effects and do some cool stuff. Now, if you hear the term 32-bit float, it basically refers to the fact that in After Effects, although you can work with 32-bit imagery, you can't see all 32 bits per channel all at once. So the float part refers to the fact that you have access to those super bright pixels and can add effects and make adjustments in order to bring those down into a range that is actually viewable in the composition. I hope this has kind of given you a little insight into 32 bits per channel and how you can actually implement this into your work. So if you're using a 3D package, by the way, uh, look in the help file and see what it says about HDR or 32 bits per channel imagery because you should be able to render out of, say, 3D Studio Max and import those files with all this great high dynamic range. So look into it. Now, some of you photographers out there may notice that I'm looking at my raw files inside of the standard image viewer. And if you're on Windows XP, just go over to the Microsoft site, type in raw viewer, and search. And the first thing that comes up is a little upgrade that allows you to view your raw images inside of the standard image viewer. So I want to go ahead and thank my friend Mark Jacobs for that tip. I would have gone on just opening them up in Photoshop, wasting valuable, valuable minutes that's time I could have been spending with my family. I'm Andrew Kramer with VideoCopilot.net.